Hello, you gorgeous lot. It's Gran here with another episode of Vintage Story from the Rusty Gear server. Now then, another very busy week and at the start of a new series on my channel has kept me from uploading this video before now. So it is very, very late and it's not a very long one either. And I don't think there'll be too many more videos from me from the Rusty Gear server either for this season because I'm having trouble with my base. What can I say? Well, my game keeps crashing. I've asked the tech guys at Rusty Gears what could be the matter and apparently I've done too much chiseling at my base. Yeah, too much chiseling. I'm gonna have to weed myself off. Next season, I can't do as much. I've accepted it though, I've accepted it. But for now, let me tell you what I've been up to because I haven't got time to do a lot of splicing of recordings together. So, after the last episode, which you saw us on a big adventure, I collected loads of stuff. A lot of it was books and the scroll racks for here, because I wanted quite a few to spread them all around in this area. And I think they look pretty cool, don't you? I think they look pretty cool. Yep, I got them all around here. I love the ones with the scrolls in, because I had some, but they didn't have any scrolls in them. So... I've also decided that I must, before the end of this episode, get some full bottles to put on these tables because the glass ones, I can hardly see them. So, anyway, I did, I've did. i done some work upstairs and look at this. That's the underside of my floor design and I must say I'm pretty chuffed with the top side of it. So let me show you how I got to it. Now, as you know, I'm a bit hit and miss with my floor designs and I wanted something quite different for the upstairs floor design. I wanted it to feel warm and I wanted it to be a, a bit retro, actually. And I think I might have achieved that. What do you think? I quite like this. Let me show you how I got to this bit because the process was quite interesting, I thought. Now I started this, it was just an idea that popped into my head whilst I was doing the floor under the vaulted ceiling. And I thought I'd have a go, just because I wanted to mess about a bit. So I had a an idea of leaves and I could see lots of leaves in my head. So I started with a simple leaf design on a piece of chalk rock. I know it says granite, but it is actually chalk. I don't know why it says granite. I think I've used it in something else. I wanted to try and get the colours right, but you know what I'm like with colours. And I wanted an autumnal feel to it, and I hope I got the colours right. But my colours were by no means set. As you know, I, I play around a lot with colours to try and get things looking right. So I started with hardened clay. And then I introduced some chert for the veins of the leaf. I wanted those to stand out quite a bit. And so far, things were working out okay, I thought. It looked like a leaf. I did think, though, that the background should be green. So I traced the outline onto some peridotite. and commence filling in the colours that I'd used on the chalk. I quite like that, but I wanted it to stand out some more, so I experimented a little bit with the different blocks that I could put on the outside, just to surround it. The granite was not doing it for me, so I tried andesite, and that didn't do it for me either. Then I tried it with something much lighter, but not quite as light as the chalk, and limestone came in here. And I quite liked that. Yeah, I quite like that a lot, actually. I think that would do the trick. So I transferred that over onto three other blocks, so I had a block of four. And I played around with my chisel to rotate them to see what they look like. I wasn't quite sure at this point whether I should have done the whole motif on one block so that there was four leaves on one, but that would have been quite 
a feat because of the size of the voxels that I had to work with. I didn't quite like that big white cross in the centre. I mean, the leaf was the same on both ends and I thought that one should be different. So I worked on it a little bit more until I came up with something different for one end of the leaf. And once I'd got the right colour in, because that wasn't the right colour, was it? It needed the lime in there. And once I got that and stuck back, I quite liked that. So it was time to reproduce the colours. And because I'd used andesite and that was in the block, I couldn't reproduce it with that in it. So I had to do the whole design again on one block. It didn't take me that long. But the, the whole point was that I didn't have any unused colours in this block. It would just have the colours that would be showing. And that would make it much easier when collecting resources and reproducing it. So it was onto the extended workbench then and copying the chisel blocks automatically so that each one came out exactly as my original design. That took a bit of time because I needed a lot of blocks. So out went the kapok and in went the blocks and then out came my chisel to rotate the ones that I wanted to. I did play around a little bit with this to see which configuration would do best. Some areas had different widths to them so I wasn't quite sure whether this would do for all the areas upstairs. But I quite like the design, so I was going to take it as far as I could. It did take me a little time to get used to rotating things the right way, but once I did, it came together really well and I really liked it. In fact, I liked it so much I decided to extend it around this central open square. And so far I'd placed the designs across three blocks. And I quite liked where the leaves joined were different on one side to the other. I chose polished peridotite on either side of the design to frame it. And I think the darker colour with the lighter colours in the actual design itself went together really well. So around this time as well I was noticing an increasing amount of lag. Which was quite frustrating when you kept misplacing blocks. And especially when I was chiselling. So that's how I came to have the peridotite on the underside. I quite liked it. Once I'd laid my design on here, one of the things I felt was that this white block in between the barrier and the polished peridotite was just a little bit too plain. So I went about doing a very simple sort of embellishment on the outer side. And once I'd got what I wanted, it was just a simple matter of using the pantograph to replicate it along the side of the flooring design. And I really liked the finished floor. I really did. In fact, I could have had this downstairs, actually, in that open area. It would have looked quite good down there because they're quite big leaves. It's quite a big pattern. And I've kept looking at that pattern downstairs and thinking... So that's how I came to do the floor. So the bedroom was a totally different thing and I've gone through many changes on this bedroom and still not 100% happy with it. But so far, this is what I've got. Now this is the front bedroom wall and I wanted a sort of a relief screen at the front. Because in Rivendell, everything is quite open. Nothing's sort of enclosed. And I did start off with an enclosed bedroom, but it just, the feel of it just wasn't there. It just really didn't feel right. So, this is what I've come up with. I absolutely adore this pattern on there. It took a bit of work, obviously, uh, and, but I only had to do one panel and then I pantographed it across for the three panels. And then I needed to join them up in places so that I could actually bring in the wall so that it it felt like it was part of the wall which I really liked but I do quite like walking over this floor design and having a look at it I keep coming up and having a look and walking around and thinking 
Did I design that? Was that me? Really? But it was. It was all me. So I just keep walking on it and looking at it. And I, I just like it a little bit more every time. No qualms about this. No question. I like it. I've put benches, quite long benches actually, on here so people can sit and just enjoy the view. Although I don't think it's a very exciting view. And I have thought about adding some waterfalls because of course in Rivendell um, waterfalls were a big feature. So I'll have to do a little bit of landscaping with my bucket out there, see how it looks. And I also changed the rafters up here as well. As you can see there are less of them and they're, um, they're, they're evenly spaced out and I moved them because of what I did inside the bedroom and I'll show you that in a minute. But I feel that my chiselling is coming to an end on the Rusty Gears at, for this series because I've had a lot of problems lately with the game crashing and it seems like it might be down to how much chiselling I've done in this area. So yeah, I think we are coming towards an end of this series. But I'm still going to try and squeeze in more bits and bobs. So. What I wanted was to make this quite open as it's very airy in Rivendell itself and this started off as a big box but I won't show you that it was so ugly it was horrid and I wanted to create a feeling of space and openness within that bedroom with the minimum of chiselling so here I've chosen the fancy aged carved acacia logs that I've collected on my travels. I had quite a few of them because I found a few stacks around in uh, in ruins and in chests. This is going to be the bed and I've sort of got a design in mind that is going to be chiselled but I'm hoping I can get through that without many crashes. <laughs> but as you can see I spaced out the rafters in here and that's why I changed the rafters outside to be sort of consistent with these in here. So this is the areas I've airiness that I have created and I've got an idea about what to do in, in between these spaces as well so that it's not just the pillars for the side walls. Uh, the back wall has to stay as it is because if you come around here we've got these arches and I wanted the purple heart to be seen through the arches and I wanted it to be a solid wall. This is a gorgeous view out here. And there was so much more that I wanted to do if I hadn't spent so much time on the chiselling because I was addicted. I, 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 I really do admit that. I was addicted to chiselling. I had to chisel everything. And yeah, look at this caterpillar from Sid. <laughs> so that's where I've got to so far. And... I can't say that there's going to be a consistent amount of uploads now from the Rusty Gears server. There are a few things I still want to do, so there will be uploads here and there as, I've, as I complete each bit. But as you know, I've started a new series with a Vintage Dory Skyblock, and I am so enjoying it. I really want to play it all the time, but I can't. I've got to pace myself. I've got to fit other things in. So... I shall upload as often as I can from Rusty Gears, but it won't be regular, just to warn you on that. And I hope you've taken a look at my Skyblock series, and if you have, I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. I'm not quite sure how long that series will run, but we'll see. I am still enjoying it loads when I come on here onto Rusty Gears. And I had so many plans that I really haven't gotten to do, like um, other builds at the top here and round at the um, shore area down at the bottom with boats and things. Oh, I would planned far too much and really not efficiently at all. So I've ended up doing a very small part of what, I, what I'd intended and that's all down to my addiction with chiselling. Oh my goodness me, how that overtook me. But hopefully next season I shall plan better and I shall complete all my plans. But I don't think it's been a bad bit build. I really, I really enjoy looking around it actually. Sometimes I just come on and just walk around and that's awesome. It really is. 
Anyway, I, I want to put some more lighting in this bit here to hang from the roof here, um, involving those lights I designed um, a few episodes ago, <laughs> if you remember. I want to make a central feature in this middle bit here with those big lights, um, those light pearl drops down the center there. I've got something in my mind, so I'm gonna be working on that as well as finishing the bed in the bedroom. And then of course, I've got to decorate around the bedroom as well. So there is that to do. So we'll see how that goes. But there is one little job I want to do before we finish today, and that is downstairs. So come with me. So I've just popped down to my little tent to get some of these bottles full of well, it's alcohol really, because I wanted to change these empty bottles here for ones that were full. And I'd forgotten I'd picked a load of mangoes, so I think I want to nibble on these to go with my meat pies, just to balance my nutrition a little bit and get in a few of those all-important vitamins. There we go. So yeah, let me just scatter a few of these around, because I think they're going to look a lot better than these empty ones. So that's going on there. It does straight away, doesn't it? It just lifts that um, that scene. Let me just, can I get in there? Uh, no, can't go that way. Can I get in this way? Oh my goodness me, how am I gonna get into this? There we go. There we go. And I've got a couple more. Well, I've got that. Oh, I've got one there as well. Very good. Right. Uh, that hasn't got one on there. I'll leave that for a minute because I've got some round here that I put on. Uh, I might leave one empty one round here because there aren't any more. So I'm just going to change these around as well. Oh, and I must mention the suggestions I had on my last video. One from Wild Witch in Anna, who suggested putting some of those benches I've got in the meeting place and around the pool out on the decking on the balcony, which I think is a good idea. And also Tamina, again, coming up with lots of wonderful ideas about having a big um, central brazier out there with benches around them. So let's see what I come up with. So that's about it for this episode. So I'm going to carry on with the little bits I've got left to do. And if you have any suggestions in the comments below, as always, I love hearing them. So take care and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye bye.